I'm John Kierkegaard. I'm a Chief Research Scientist in Farming Systems based at CSIRO in Canberra. Uh, it's important to know uh, what, what, uh, what nutrients you do have um, so that there's adequate nutrition available for, for the yield targets you're, you're setting. The yield gap is, is really the, the difference between what we consider to be the potential yield, um, that the climate, essentially the climate and the soil allow us to grow, and what growers are actually achieving. What some recent data has been showing us is that the last 20 years um, the climate has changed in such a way that the potential yield for wheat has been um, reduced by around 30 per cent. In other words, it's been hot and dry and with extreme weather events like frost and heat. All those things combined have reduced the potential for wheat yields by 30 per cent and yet growers have been basically maintaining yields. We're starting to realise that, that we're able to kind of just maintain soil organic carbon levels uh, but not build them and in some cases they are running down. Uh, the reason for that is often that we are um, fertilising our crops for the yield we're expecting to remove but there's no additional nutrients there to build soil organic matter. So organic matter in the soil is more than carbon, it, it, it contains carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus and sulphur and if we want to maintain or build those levels of fertility um, we need to be making sure that we're applying enough nutrients to both grow the crops and remove the, the material for sale but also maintain um, that level of, of, of soil organic matter. Diversity is certainly necessary if you are moving away from a, from a mixed farming system where the, where the livestock enterprise offers that, that economic and biological resilience. Um, it's really important to maintain those alternative crops in the system and keep a diverse rotation and even consider um, different end uses, uh, hay um, and, and, and other opportunities um, to deal with issues that might come along like weeds or frost or, or uh, um, uh, those sorts of things. There's been really big improvements in the, in the varieties we have available to us now of, of pulses, um, lentils, chickpeas, uh, canola varieties are improving. Um, and although they were once considered, a, I guess, a risky crop and in, in drier and riskier environments um, uh, they, they can be uh, more risky. But I think in the context of a system over a number of years, uh, the data is now indicating that you can integrate those crops um, into systems, even in the low rainfall risky environments, and capture benefits for several years, whether that be water saving, nitrogen, um, being able to maintain a good herbicide rotation, keeping on top of weeds. And by looking across three or four seasons, uh, even if there are still you know, considerable cereals in the rotation, those uh, alternative crops are now really becoming a, you know, a, 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 an important part of the whole system. Thinking about the crop sequence over a number of years is beneficial, so perhaps growers should stick to their rotations, not be tempted to, to um, stray too far from sort of good basic diverse rotations, um, so that, which will underpin the management of, of, of weeds, and nutrition and diseases. When we've tried to look at what might be the ideal um, crop enterprise or crop pasture enterprise mix or mix of crops, it appears to be more the level of skill of the manager rather than the particular system. Um, that's the main driver of success. Uh, having strategies like a diverse cropping system that involves some grain legumes that are going to leave nitrogen in the soil so that it's going to be there Whatever the, whatever the season brings. Um, they're the sorts of strategies, I think, particularly in those low rainfall areas that, that will, will allow you to avoid too much risk in those dry seasons and capitalise in, in the good seasons. And the other, uh, I guess, issue, important issue comes down to the business management itself, looking at the costs, what, what, are, the, what are the main drivers of your cost? Is it, is it, are you overcapitalised? Do you have too much machinery? Do you have too much debt? Or, um, understanding what, what are the real um, costs in your business and which ones you can minimise without sacrificing the upside, I guess, is a, is a really important part. Um, so that sort of business skill as well as the crop management skill have, have to go together, I think, for, for success. Um, stick, to your, stick to your crop sequence, your longer term strategies. Uh, have a diverse um, system if you can, diverse end uses, be flexible. 
and in particular in 2017, I think you're, um, you're set up well with good subsoil moisture profiles. Um, don't cut corners and don't take your eye off the big drivers, which are uh, generally weeds, um, nutrition and, and keeping costs under control.